What methods can be applied for effective Bible study? Turn to the scripture references. These references appearing in most Bibles will help you observe the connections between various scriptures and recognize certain patterns in the Bible. These references most often appear in the center of the two sides of the Bible page, or at the bottom. Turn to them and read them over a few times. These references are largely verses that confirm the verse or portion of scripture in which it appears. These references contain additional thoughts on the theme or topic appearing in the verse you are studying. Many of the Bible's key teachings appear in more than one verse. Even though they were written by two different authors, verses such as 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 5 and 6 and James chapter 4 verse 6, both speak of the fact that the Lord resists the proud and exalts the humble. Scripture indeed confirms Scripture. Such confirmation is especially the case between the Old and New Testaments, as the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New Testament. The actual accounts explaining what happened in the lives of people in the Bible, further confirm the teachings of the Scriptures. Taking the previously mentioned teaching in the New Testament regarding God resisting the proud and exalting the humble, the Old Testament contains many examples of this taking place in the lives of Bible characters. David was exalted from the position of lowly shepherd boy to that of king of Israel, 1 Samuel. Other passages of scripture further illustrate the teaching of these two verses. Namely that to humble yourself is to move underneath the hand of God. They confirm the fact that humbling yourself under a certain person does not guarantee that you will be uplifted, but doing so under God's hand definitely does, as it is the might of his hand that exalts a person. You are indeed not able to lift yourself higher, even if you had twenty arms. The hand of God, however, is more than sufficient to uplift you to a higher level. Read the scripture in the opposite, in 2 Kings 6 verse 16. Elisha told his servant, Those that are with us are more than those that are with them. This verse can also be read as, They that are with them are less than those who are with us. Both of these readings indicate that with God, his servants always have the majority. Reading the verse in the opposite way helps you see its content in a different light. In the first reading, your majority is emphasized, whereas in the second reading, their minority is emphasized. Similarly, when Jesus stated in Luke chapter 9 verse 50 that, he that is not against us is for us. It can also be read as, He that is not for us is against us. When reading scripture in the opposite way, you may also contrast words and phrases. Someone or something described as being weak can also be described as being not strong, which emphasizes the lack of strength. See the positive and negative message of the scripture. Consider how and how not to do certain things. These contrasts could be preached during a sermon as well, which would increase the understanding of the hearers. Besides teaching people that Jesus will come in the same manner in which he ascended, they should also teach them why he will not come in a different manner. Acts 1 verse 11 Instead of studying the common topic, what you must do to be saved, study the topic, what you must not do to be saved. Contrasts can be observed within verses of the same chapter, such as is commonly found in Proverbs, and across verses of the same chapter. A good example of this is found in 
John chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. These tell the reader what Jesus came to do and what he did not come to do. God did not send him for man's condemnation, but for man's salvation, to be the savior of man, not the judge of man. Contrasting things when reading the scriptures may also involve you placing different characters in different Bible stories, in order to understand the significance of certain people and events. Consider the fight between David and Goliath. Even though Israel's main enemy during the time of Samson was also the Philistines, God did not raise Samson to defeat Goliath. Replacing David with Samson in the fight against Goliath would have meant that fewer significant lessons could be learned from the defeat of Goliath, given Samson's supernatural strength. The Israelites' dependence on the Lord would have been much less than, or even non-existent, since they then also had a champion of their own. Notwithstanding his much taller height, Goliath would then probably not have been regarded as being undefeatable. Moreover, the Philistines would not have been so bold, as their faith in Goliath to win the battle against Samson would have been much less. This contrasting reading, therefore, helps you to understand that God raises up specific people for specific times in order to execute his divine purpose.